Well, today we're going to pick up where we left off on multiplication and show you lots of different techniques and different ways that you can multiply. Um, to start with, though, I just wanted to give you an encouragement, and that is for you to think about how you can get the absolute most from the videos. Uh, now, I'm really aware that some children will be in year three and won't have done as, as much multiplication. Uh, you might have missed some multiplication with the time that we've had off, whereas other children will be in year four and you might do, be doing much more challenging calculations. Now, what I want you to think about is this. We're going to introduce some principles of different techniques you can use to multiply with. We're going to try and do that in a smaller number range and then think about how you can adapt what you've seen to build your own understanding. So it might be that you use equipment and make your own arrays and that helps you to show and build your understanding. Or it might be you can just take these principles and use them in a, in a more advanced number range and show all the different calculations you can now answer. We'll all look at the same big ideas and you'll apply them in your own different ways. Uh, get, get as much from the video as you can. Good luck and enjoy. So today we're going to start with a slightly different game of how many dots. So here I've got 5 times 3 equals 15. Here I've got 15 dots. I'm going to change the image so you see a different number of dots and you could either look at how many more dots there are and particularly how does the number sentence change. Okay, so you don't have to pause the video. You might want to if you want a little bit more time, but it's just a little warm up game today. So how many dots do you see? How does the number sentence change? So let's have a look. Uh, here's the first one. So what number sentence is this here? Tell the screen. And it is. It's still lots of three here. We've still got sets of three. And how many? Well, we've got seven lots of three. So it's 21. Can you see the difference is it's six more. Five threes are 15. And we have another two threes. Have a look at the next one. So we start from five threes equals 15. So what changes now? What will the n number sentence become? Tell the screen. What's our new number sentence? Okay, let's have a look. So we, this time we, we still have lots of five. Um, so how many fives are there now? Of course, there are four lots of five. And so we've added another lot of five. So it's it's now five more. It's gone from five threes of 15, five fours of 20. Uh, have a look at the next one. So uh, we're going to start from uh, five times three equals 15. Uh, what number sentence do we have now? Can you see it's kind of been doubled? So we did have 5 times 3 equals 15. And now we've got 10 lots of 3. It's still lots of 3, but this time we've got 5 lots of 3 and another 5 lots of 3. It's 10 lots of 3 in total. Well, that just prepares us, it warms us up for our main task today, where we're looking at connections in multiplication. And again, trying to see different methods and different ways of seeing multiplication. Um, so it's going to make you really, really flexible. Again, the thing I just want to emphasise, this introduction is looking at small quantities. You might already know all the answers to all these questions. But if you understand the principle, at the end, you can then go and really challenge yourself by applying the principles in a larger number range. I, I don't do that because I, I can't show with images as easily um, these calculations with, with larger numbers. Uh, and I can't wait to see how you can apply your understanding later. Anyway, let's get started. So let's have a look at I know so. So using one fact that we know to derive to work out another one. 6 times 5 equals 30. So there I have 6 5 times. Or, I guess you could look at this in terms of I've got 5 and how many lots of 5? Well, I've got 6 lots of 5. 6 times 5 equals 30. 30 dots in total. Um, so now 9 times 5. I'm going to change the image from being 6 lots of 5 to 9 lots of 5. How's it going to change? What's the link between 6 5s and 9 5s? Uh, pause the video. What do you think? Okay, and let's have a look how that image is going to change. Um, so nine fives, well, it's still lots of five, but now we've got three more lots of five. Um, so we can see how the image changes and also the answer, well, it will be 15 more. I can just think, well, I'm going to need another three lots of five here. The thing that stays the same is the five. The thing that changes is the number of lots of five. Um, let's have a look at this one. So six fives uh, equals 30. How can you use that to work out six sevens? Um, pause the video. H how's the picture going to change? H how can I use one fact to work out the other one? 
Okay, now what we keep the same is it's still lots of six, but we're going to have more lots of six here. So we're still going to keep the sixes. But now, can you see, instead of having five lots of six, we've now got seven lots of six. So the difference, we've got these two extra lots of six. Uh, so six sevens, well, it, it will be 12 more. I'm going to show you another thing, that, that's another rule in maths that's fantastic for working out particular calculations. Uh, I'm going to show you some calculations later that, that will make them so much easier. It, it's this one, 8 times 3. So this array shows uh, 8 3 times. Now, have a look at this. Um, I can change 8 3s um, to make it 4 6s. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to halve this 8 and I'm going to double this 3 to make it Half of eight is four, double three is six. And have a look how the picture changes. So can you see both pictures still have this um, blue section, but can you see the yellow one has almost gone underneath here? And eight threes and four sixes are the same. So when you're multiplying, if you double one number, like the three has been doubled to make it six, and you halve the other one, so eight has been halved to make it four, in total we have the same amount, 24 dots, on both pictures. Now, let me just give you one example then of I know and so. So this time I've got four times nine equals 36. So I, I know this fact. So I wonder what I can, what I can work out. Um, so now pause the video and I want as many different number facts that you can work out for four times nine, from four times nine equals 36. So see if you can write down some different calculations that link to that one. Maybe some extra lots of four or not as many fours or some more nines or not as many nines. Or maybe we can try doubling and halving. Have a go, see what you can find. Okay, so I, I hope you've managed to find some different, some different connections there. Um, now, I'm going to show you some possibilities. Um, so let's say, well, I know four nines. How can you use that to work out eight nines or, or five nines or two times 18 or, or four times eight? So I wonder how they're linked. Now, either you might be able to work out the answer or you might just notice, well, what's the link between these questions? Um, again, everyone will access this in a different way. But what's the link between the questions here? Uh, pause the video. Have a think about those ones. Okay, well, well, let's have a look. Um, now, the, what's the link here? Well, four times nine, it, it's still, I'm multiplying by nine, but this time it's eight lots of nine, not four lots of nine. Can you see this is doubled? And the answer is actually double 36, it's 72. So I can use four nines to work out, to derive eight nines. Let's have a look at this one. Four nines equals 36. Five nines, well, we keep, it's still lots of nine, but now I've got one extra nine. So I add 9 from 36 to get to 45. 4 9 equals 36. Well, what about, what's the link to 2 times 18? Well, half of 4 is 2. Double 9 is 18. So I've halved one number, I've doubled the other one. The answer, was well, the same. And what about this one? 4 times 9 equals 36. 4 times 8. Well, it's still lots of 4. I just have one less lot of 4 now. So I've gone from 36 to 32. So everyone, for your independent task, the key thing is that you see the connections between multiplication facts. Now, you could use any of these tasks to help you to do that. I don't mind which number range you use, but the main thing is you understand the, how multiplication facts are connected. So things that you can do to help you to do that are the related multiplication fact webs. So here are three examples of multiplication facts you could start from and have in the middle of your web. See if you can come up with different related facts that, that link to those multiplication facts. You might use that doubling and halving strategy or those adjustments. So as many number sentences as you can. Or maybe you'll have a go at one of the I know and so sequences. Now, it's helpful if you can tell me what the answer is or write down what the answer is. But the really important thing is, well, how do the calculations link to the question before? What's the same about the question before and what's different? And how does it affect the answer? And it's about seeing those links. Now, equally at the bottom, I've got a question that refers to doubling and halving as well. And thinking about which of these questions are made easier by doubling and halving. Sometimes it's very useful. Um, and again, the answers are, are at the bottom, but as normal, just do the thing that's really useful for you to show your understanding of those connections between multiplication facts. 
Well done. It's been fantastic having you joining in. And I hope this really deepens your understanding.